Thank you very much, uh, Charlotte. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, we're very happy that in addition to Sustainable Companies project team members, uh, we, we also uh, received some very interesting abstracts as response to our call for papers. So, so one of the uh, international scholars uh, who, is, who is new to, to our uh, meetings uh, is uh, the next speaker. Uh, and correct me if I pronounce your name wrong because I didn't get a chance to check that with you beforehand, but uh, Raphael Heffron. Yeah. 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 Uh, from uh, from Sterling, who will uh, speak about uh, uh, reporting in a context that combines some of the issues that we need to discuss, uh, an issue which uh, uh, Robin Mierz also touched upon about uh, subsidies. So we're very interested to, to hearing in hearing your presentation. Please go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> well, thanks for the to the organisers for an excellent conference, and. Uh, just to begin, uh, well, my name is Raphael Heffron uh, from the University of Stirling in Scotland and my paper is dealing with energy subsidy reporting and what I suppose I'm targeting directly energy companies, uh, those responsible for a large majority of our CO2 emissions. Um, And just a brief overview, I'll first present you know, the issue of energy subsidies and the current problems, go through the case for reform, and then, prevent, or, um, and then talk about my uh, solution. So if we look at energy subsidies and why they're um, increasingly important, and increasingly a topical issue in many countries. And in many countries in the past, uh, I suppose, decade, and in many countries at the moment, there's new energy law and policy being developed. And this new energy law and policy is being developed solely really to move us towards low carbon economies. Much of the law in the area is actually about creating subsidies for to ignite or to uh, try and develop the low carbon economy. However, the energy subsidy uh, real pro problem or real issue actually lies in the past and an ongoing issue. And that is that fossil fuel energy sources receive um, an enormous amount of subsidies. And this is in the form of uh, tax relief, which is for existing um, new and speculative uh, projects. And the aim for a lot of these um, tax reliefs for uh, the oil and gas industry is to allow a project rapidly recover its costs. And that's a quote from the purpose of UK tax legislation uh, in the area. And one of the problems is, um, at the moment, is that, and you know, for the past, that it's been very difficult to calculate fossil fuel subsidies. Um, so these tax reliefs, it's been very difficult to calculate them. And some could argue that, you know, that is strange, but um, someone mentioned, a couple of people mentioned lobbying yesterday. And just last year in the, U in the US election year, when we look, look at the amount of uh, money that was spent on advertising by the fossil fuel industry, it was close to 400 million in the US. That's in comparison to a mere 40 million by the low carbon industry. So you might wonder why it's difficult to calculate energy, energy subsidies for the sector. Um, however, some subsidies, or so, sorry, some studies have attempted to calculate energy subsidies. And one is Texas. I suppose most of us would associate Texas a lot with the oil and gas industry. But its um, state accounting body has calculated um, in a report subsidies for the energy sector. And in this report, it showed that fossil fuel, uh, the fossil fuel sources were in receipt of the most subsidies. And also the Global Studies Initiative. This has been ongoing work really over the last decade. It's a body supported, uh, based in Canada and supported by the, uh, the UN Environmental Programme. And again, it has shown that the fossil fuel industry has received the most subsidies, near to 400 billion per annum. 
and that's in comparison to, uh, that's a global figure or a global estimate, and that's in comparison to 100 billion for low carbon sources. And the World Bank and IEA um, in a joint report said that that figure for fossil fuels was closer to 550 billion. Um, and just the final point, what needs to be realized as we go forward and we try and reduce CO2 emissions um, and looking at companies and sustainability is that there's a major difference between the subsidies received for fossil fuels and low carbon energy sources. So the major difference is that fossil fuels receive subsidies in term, when they're in construction or production um, of that oil or gas. And that's in contrast to low carbon energy sources, which by and large only receive subsidies when they actually produce electricity. And this is a major consequence in terms of um, you know, the cost for a project. Uh, a lot of low carbon energy projects, the upfront costs are quite big. This costs a lot in, low, in you know, loan interest. And we saw from uh, Professor Turnbull yesterday, who presented um, a comparison between fossil fuel and renewable energy resources and showed that interest costs were you know, one of the key factors. So if we look at the case for reform, and I would argue that at the moment there's a compelling case to reform the subsidy issue and to help, you know, to have more sustainable companies and into the future more sustainable economic growth. And I will just run quickly through these because um, each of them might be, could be nearly seen as a, a further discussion or paper in its own right. At the moment we have the Aarhus Convention which does give us uh, the right to access to environmental information. Um, we also have international mechanisms at the moment, such as the Global Sus Subsidies Initiative that I mentioned, but also uh, the EITI, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. And this is um, a cooperative agreement internationally between uh, many countries and companies that actually, uh, where companies report how much they pay for a license to extract resources. So this shows that you know, there is some cooperation on some issues uh, in relation to, you know, the energy sector. Uh, then there's the polluter pays principle. You know, is this applied su sufficiently enough in terms of energy subsidies? Um, and, you know, as our speakers earlier to uh, key keynote speakers mentioned, you know, we are entering a new era in terms of the age of corporate responsibility. This information disclosure and energy subsidy reporting is, you know, it's not uh, commercially sensitive information, um, so there's no, re no reason uh, for it not to be disclosed. There's also the issue of equity and justice across generations, and we need to assure affordable supplies, uh, you know, for our populations, and we also need to ensure that there's sustainable future supply of energy uh, into the future. And the final issue, targeting best technology. And this is a key issue. Um, you know, what we want to be asking in society is, are we supporting the best technology? And um, through energy subsidies and the, you know, the figures that I've to told you about, it seems that we actually are supporting, you know, perhaps one of the worst um, technologies. And there's further danger at the moment in terms of uh, the support or potential support uh, being given to uh, shale gas and shale oil technology. So just to talk about um, my, the solution to this, and essentially the solution would involve the disclosure of the information on energy subsidy reporting as a note to uh, accounts, uh, a note to annual accounts uh, in co for four companies. And what this would do is it would allow us to provide an actual true cost of fossil fuels. And that's, this is something, um, you know, a couple of people criticised economics yesterday 
and this is something you know the economic models to date have not you know not yet done. It would also give you know the low carbon uh, energy sources subsidy parity with fossil fuels, uh, you know at the very least, and we should also give um, energy sources the opportunity to rapidly recover their sources or sorry their costs. Um, so how would we do this? Well, we can introduce a new IFRS or I suppose actually base it on the existing IAS which allows for us to currently recover or, or to, it means that companies should provide information on the government grants they receive. So it will be extending this to what tax reliefs they actually receive. So this is an opportune time, I think at the moment, currently the conceptual framework is being developed and the conceptual framework is where um, principles are identified for developing and revising IFRS. So I would argue that in this conceptual framework, we should be looking at adding in environmental impact um, into one of these principles when we revise IFRSs. Um, an advantage of this would be that IFRSs uh, can be enforceable um, in the EU and there's also the secondary option of introducing it at a national level in company or tax law. Uh, so just to include, or to conclude, a transparent system will have many benefits and, you know, as I said, we need to decrease the support for fossil fuels, give low carbon energy sources at least the same support and increase the financial support, you know, increase the chance for the financial support and for low carbon energy projects and reduce their borrowing costs. Uh, the onus should be on companies to, um, not governments, to report this issue. Uh, the G20 talks have discussed this issue, but it's rather stagnated on national governments uh, who are sort of meant to report on this issue. Um, and, you know, if, if this issue is put to the forefront, um, it will influence uh, climate change discussions. Um, and as some of the speakers yesterday said, there's a carbon emissions are increasing potentially by 4% or sorry, up by four degrees when really the limit should be at two degrees. And this is a, you know, an area where we can stop oil and gas production maybe at source and highlight the, you know, the possibly cheaper um, low carbon energy sources. And as Anders said yesterday, um, our current policy in law in this area is that we're bankrupting nature and really we're losing our environmental capital. And through energy subsidies, um, we are actually paying for that privilege. So thank you.